we go. 2021. <laughs> ah, nam on yo horenge kyo. Welcome. Uh, shall we continue with the Go Show into this new year? Hopefully my, uh, my voice will hold out a little bit better as it, as we close the last, uh, 365 day period. <laughs> All right. So, uh, we're in the midst of a Q and a session in this Go Show. And uh, Nitrin is still uh, uh, justifying his uh, lineage in the Dharma, in the teaching of uh, our Buddha, Buddha ness and Buddha practice, Buddha way. And uh, this next question is quite direct, and it's almost a repetition of the previous one, but it's a little different. Question. How can you be certain that you are the votary of the Lotus Sutra prophesied to appear at the beginning of the latter day of the law? Since we've already established that. So the answer is going to be a, uh, a common refrain we've heard several times. Uh, he quotes directly from the Lotus Sutra itself. Since hatred and jealousy toward this sutra abound even when the thus come one is in the world, how much more will it be so after his passing? Another passage reads, There will be many ignorant people who will curse and speak ill of us and will attack us with swords and staves. A third passage says, Again and again we will be banished. A fourth reads, It, the Lotus Sutra, will face much hostility in the world and be difficult to believe. Uh, a fifth uh, quote, some among the group would take sticks of wood or tiles and stones and beat and pelt him, end quote. A sixth quote, evil devils and devils as people, heavenly beings, dragons, yakshas, kumbanda, demons, and others will seize the advantage, end quote. So I was about to describe why he's saying all that, but I think that he does an adequate job of it here in the next paragraph. That the people might believe in the Buddha's words, I have held up the bright mirror of these scriptural passages before the ruler, his subjects, and the four categories of Buddhists throughout Japan. But I can find none other than myself who has lived these passages. As for the, the time, now is most certainly the beginning of the latter day of the law, but had Nietzsche not appeared, the Buddha's words would be false. So it's obvious he's claiming this position because the, um, the teachings of the Lotus uh, and prior to the Lotus point to this being the time uh, that this true votary of the sutra um, will be uh, will will face conflict obstacles directly related to his support of the sutra and in his day he was the one being banished and and punished and so on and so forth so kind of obvious isn't it now at in one way this is a a, a discourse on uh Nietzsche's obvious um, lineage and position in his time as uh, the Bodhisattva that he was. But it's also written in this way so that we understand that this is advice for our own practice, that there will be times when we will find conflict uh, dissuading us from practicing. Uh, and the stronger we practice, the more reviled we might be. But this is none other than the process of something that your mother probably told you when you were a kid. Um, don't hang around with bad influences. Uh, try to find better friends. Uh, and I, I, you know, when your mom says that to you and you're, you know, seven, eight years old, you're like, how the heck do I do that? Frank, friends just magically appear in my life. I don't, you know, I don't cultivate them. It's not like I go out in the yard and, well, this will be a good friend, and no, that's not a good friend. No, 
It's an advice on experience. Learn to judge, learn to qualify, learn to discriminate amongst the influences in your life. Um, but, you know, we need influences in our lives. That's why we have to teach each other or, or support each other's path toward Buddhahood, right? Um, because that's how we're built. That's our samsaric reality. Um, but at some point, you should be able to begin to re realize that some influences don't lead to good results. And through no, whether it's intentional or not, and that's important to remember because that's Buddhist compassion, is to understand that some people will lead you in a, 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 an incorrect or damaging, self-harmful way um, through no specific intent of their own. That's just what we call in Buddhism their karmic tendencies and conditions, right? Um, others will have intent, and we need to recognize, recognize, recognize those rather quickly. Uh, but that also comes from our ability to self-study because as we understand how our own mind works and how our own, to use the, the vernacular, our own demons run around in our head and, and influence ourselves poorly, um, we then can see how others through either intent or, or ignorance do the same things. Um, but this, you know, this is something we're supposed to learn as young adults. Uh, but our cultures have grown to a different kind of education, a more um, uh, socioeconomic reality, more spe especially in capitalist nations, right? Where everything's about uh, security slash power through uh, the manipulation of uh, gains as much gains for as little work as possible. It's not a very, uh, it's not a very egalitarian system and Buddhism is an egalitarian system, right? All right. Next question. You are an ex extremely arrogant, uh, monk, even more arrogant than Mahadeva or Sunkashatra. Is this not so? So, this is pretty critical of, of Nichiren. Answer. Insulting Nichiren is an offense even graver than those of Devadatta or Vimalamitra. My words may sound arrogant, but my sole purpose is to fulfill the Buddha's predictions and reveal the truth of his words. In all of Japan, who but Nichiren can be called the votary of the Lotus Sutra? By denouncing Nichiren, you would make lies of the Buddha's prophecies. Are you not then an extremely evil man? So he turns this on his head and he says it specifically which, uh, in the third person because he doesn't want to see himself. Uh, or it's not that he doesn't want it. He doesn't want to be described as somebody who is practicing Buddhism and disseminating this teaching for his own gain. Because this was very much a reality and still it is today for many schools of thought, whether they be religion or, or even science or, or, or um, philosophies. Uh, it's all about you agree with me, then you're good. If you don't agree with me, then you're bad. And uh, so he doesn't want the teachings to be held in that, con uh, that, that um, uh, context. He wants to make sure always as he does all of these things. And this is why he refers so much to scholarship and quotes and other uh, sutras and commentaries uh, because he's saying, hey, I'm, you know, I'm putting this out there for you to analyze. I am Nichiren and I'm fulfilling this duty, but this isn't Nichiren's um, uh, idea, concept. Uh, it is Nichiren, my idea of how we can support this thinking in the Lotus uh, immediately and practice it in this age as was foretold by Shakyamuni and several other bodhisattvas um, throughout uh, the teachings history. 
So I'm just another historian of the teaching and I'm making it relevant to us today in this 13th century um, for you to understand and to practice and to embrace and to copy and recite and so forth. So I, Nietzschean, am acting as a good faith actor in the propagation of the Dharma. So this is why he uses the third person. He doesn't, to, to be arrogant is to take, uh, to be speaking of oneself, which as we know in Buddhism is ego. So it, it's not about the ego, it's about being a good uh, transmitter of the teaching, right? Because ultimately, um, and this is something I've said before, um, teaching isn't, it's an odd word because in an authoritarian society where you grow up in a, with authoritarian ideas, the idea of a teacher is somebody who knows and who then disseminates what they know on you, right? That's how we think of teachers. But in truth, um, Buddhism is about learning and sharing learning. It's not, it's not teacher in the authoritarian sense. It's teacher in the sharing sense that by sharing our adventure together, both of us learn. So teaching is a self process, a self teaching. It, there's a difference. It may seem subtle, but it's quite profound. Okay, question. You certainly fit the thus come one's prophecies. Oh, what changed your mind? <laughs> but are there not perhaps other votaries of the Lotus Sutra in the five regions of India or, or the land of China? Answer. Throughout the four continents of the world, there are surely not two suns. So within the four seas, how can there be two rulers? Well, that jumps around a little bit, but I think you get the point. Question. On what basis do you say that? Well, maybe we'll get some clues here. Answer. The moon appears in the west and sheds its light eastward, but the sun rises in the east and casts its rays to the west. The same is true of Buddhism. It spreads from west to east in the former and middle days of the law, but will travel from east to west in the latter day. The great teacher Miao Lo says, quote, does this not mean that Buddhism has been lost in India, which in fact it has been? The country of its origin and must now be sought in the surrounding regions, end quote. Thus, no Buddhism is found in India anymore. Remember, this is, this is 13th century. During the 150 years or so since barbarians from the north invaded the eastern capital in the time of Emperor Kao Tsun, both Buddhism and imperial authority became extinct in China. Concerning the collection of scriptures kept in China, not one Hinayana Sutra remains, and most Mahayana Sutras have also been lost. Even when Jakusho and other uh, uh, monks set out from Japan to take some sutras to China, no one was found there who could embrace these sutras and teach them to others. It was as though there were only wooden or stone statues garbed in priests' robes and carrying begging bowls. That is why Sun Shi said, quote, it, Buddhism, be, uh, came first from the west, like the moon appearing. Now it is returning from the east, like the sun rising, end quote. These remarks make it clear that Buddhism is lost in both Ch India and China. Question. Now, I can see no Buddhism exists in either India or China. But how do you know Buddhism exists in the other three continents, in the East, West, and North? Answer. The eighth volume of the Lotus Sutra states, quote, After the thus come one has entered extinction, I will cause it, the Lotus Sutra, to be widely propagated throughout Jampudvipa, and we'll see that it never comes to an end." end quote. The words throughout Jampudvipa indicate that the other three continents are excluded. And this, as I explained earlier, Jampudvipa meaning the populated world, the world of uh, uh, extant human population. 
So these other continents, which may not even have been investigated by, um, you know, when they talk about Champudvipa, it might be handy to think of it as Eurasia, that continent, um, because that was the populated universe. Although they were aware that was there were more continents, they had no knowledge of any peoples on those continents. So it's, it's a historical thing. Uh, I wouldn't get too caught up with it, just thinking of it as a relationship to the world's peoples is the most helpful. Question. I have seen that the Buddha's prophecy applies to you. Okay, I'm convinced. Now, what do you yourself predict? Since you're a votary of the Lotus Sutra, um, and we accept that 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 you are a fulfillment of a prophecy that you know aligns with everything we've been studying, uh, okay, uh, then what do you see happening now and in the future? Answer: In the light of the Buddha's prophecy, quote, the last five hundred year period, end quote, has already begun. I say that without fail, Buddhism will arise and flow forth from the east, from the land of Japan. Omens will occur in the form of unusual disturbances in the heavens and terrible cal calamities on earth that will be greater in magnitude than ever before witnessed in the former or middle day of the law. When the Buddha was born, when he turned the wheel of the law, and also when he entered Nirvana, the omens, both auspicious and inauspicious, were greater than had ever been observed. The Buddha is the teacher of all sages. The Buddha, not Shakyamuni, although he was certainly Buddha, or enlightened to Buddha, is a source for all of us, right? So, the Buddha is a teacher of all sages simply means that our own Buddhahood is our teacher. We self-teach, It's right? The, <clears throat> the sutras describe how, at the time of his birth, light shone forth in five colors in all directions, and the night became as bright as noon. At the time of his passing, twelve white arcs crossed the sky from north to south. The sun's light was extinguished, and the day became as dark as midnight. There followed the two thousand years of the former and middle days of the law. Sages, some Buddhist and some not, were born and died, but never were there any omens of such magnitude. From the beginning of the Shoka era, 1257, through this year, however, tremendous earthquakes and extraordinary phenomena in the heavens have occurred, exactly like the signs that marked the Buddha's birth and death. You should know from this that a sage like a Buddha has been born. A great comet crossed the sky, but for which ruler or subject did this omen appear? The earth tilted, and gaping fissures opened three times, but for which sage or worthy did this occur? You should realize that these great omens, both good and bad, are of no ordinary secular significance. They are signs that the teachings of the supreme law are ascending and that the other teachings are in decline. Tendai states, quote, By observing the fury of the rain, we can tell the greatness of the dragon that caused it. And by observing the flourishing of the lotus flowers, we can tell the depth of the pond they grow in, end quote. Miao Lo says, quote, wise men can perceive the cause of things, as snakes know the way of snakes, end quote. Twenty-one years have gone by since I, Nichiren, understood this principle and began propagation. During this period, I have suffered difficulties day after day and month after month. In the last two or three years, among other things, I was almost put to death, the chances are one in ten thousand that I will survive the year or even a month. If anyone questions these, these things, let that person ask my disciples for details. What fortune is mine to expiate in one lifetime the offenses of slandering the law I have accumulated from the infinite past? How delighted I am to serve Shakyamuni Buddha, the Lord of teachings, whom I have never seen, 
I pray <clears throat> or meditate that before anything else I can guide and lead the ruler and those others who persecuted me. I will tell the Buddha about all the disciples who have aided me, and before I die, I will transfer the great blessings derived from my practice to my parents who gave me life. Now, as if in a dream, I understand the heart of the Treasure Tower chapter. As the sutra states, quote, if you were to uh, seize Mount Sumero and fling it far off into the measureless Buddha lands, that too would not be difficult. But if after the Buddha has entered extinction in the time of evil, you can preach this sutra, that will be difficult indeed. End quote. The great teacher Dengyo says, quote, Shakyamuni taught that the shallow is easy to embrace, but the profound is difficult. To discard the shallow and seek the profound is the way of a person of courage. The great teacher Tendai trusted and obeyed Shakyamuni and worked to uphold the Lotus School, spreading its teachings throughout China. We of Mount Hiei inherited the doctrine from Tendai and worked to uphold the Lotus School and to disseminate its teachings throughout Japan. I, Nichiren, of the Awa province, have doubtless inherited the teachings of the law from these three teachers, and in this era of the latter day I work to uphold the Lotus School and disseminate the law. Together we should, call, we should be called the four teachers of the three countries. Namu Myoho Renge Kyo, Namu Myoho Renge Kyo. Written by Nichiren, the Sharmana of Japan, the eleventh day of the in, intercalary, fifth month of the tenth year of Bunen, uh, Bunei, 1273, with the cyclical sign Mizunoto Tori. So he was 52 when he wrote this. It's an interesting, interesting go shows. A lot of. Uh, there were a lot of things on his mind, obviously, as he wrote it. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting that I came upon this Go Show as we we're transitioning from 2020 to 2021. Um, there's a lot of uh, encouragement and solidification of uh, Nitrin as a... Um, not only a prophesied or a, a um, validated uh, leader of teaching in his day, but also the, um, this constant validation of uh, the words of the Dharma, uh, the, the, its applicability, the, its timeless. Um, the, as you study Buddhism, I think it becomes quite evident um, that these great bodhisattvas uh, after uh, Shakyamuni uh, went into extinction, people like Nagarjuna, Vasubandhu, uh, Virmalakirt, uh, uh, sorry, um, I always forget that, that one's name. Anyway, uh, Tendai, Dengyo, Miaolo, all of them, all the way to Nichiren, are simply taking the same teachings that they've investigated and spent their lives um, uh, learning uh, and perceiving more more profoundly um, are, are simply taking those teachings and making them clear to the people of their own time as the capacity of human beings have grown has grown and and uh, over uh, the centuries and uh, the millennia, um, new bodhisattvas arise, and uh, there it's easy to see how they're foretold because um, the teachings themselves are, are foretelling. They are a foretelling of your own ability to realize your Buddha mind uh, and Buddha ness in general. Um, so it's all a foretelling, uh, and as you help and share your learning of that with others, you become a foreteller because of the nature of the teachings. It's, it's the, the method, the Buddhist method, if you will, 
That's what we do when we chant, Namo Myoho Renge Kyo, to our Gohonzons. Those are mirrors. They're mirrors of our own Buddha ness. So what are we doing? We are self teaching, learning our Buddha ness. That is the Buddhist method. That's what all of this is about. Okay. So with that, we're kicking off a new year. Um, let's be prepared for successes. Let's not forget to acknowledge them because we're greedy creatures, us humans. And as soon as we get something new, uh, the shine um, wears off of it, whatever it is, quite quickly. And we start taking it, uh, taking it for granted. So let's not do that this year. Let's appreciate every gain that we make in our Buddha wisdom as we uh, travel to a, a better and better less by that I mean less and less suffering in our own lives and endeavor to put less and less suffering into the lives of the world around us um, so we can just push the enlightenment curve if you will up if up is better <laughs> words okay so the next one will be a reply to Hakiri Saburo. I can't wait to get into that with you guys. And for the time being, so deeply appreciate uh, your participating in these videos. Oh, I thought of something earlier, you know, with almost every video, I always have to remind myself that there's, yes, there's a cost associated with all this equipment and all this effort. And I hate to ask, but um, I have no, uh, I don't have a job. I don't have any other mode of income. I'm not whining. I'm just saying it's a privilege for me to be able to make these videos and increase my, uh, my own, uh, life condition as well as hopefully yours. Um, but you know, if you can, uh, every cent is really appreciated. It goes right back into this channel and, uh, making these videos. So Patreon, uh, at uh, patreon.com slash TLK or uh, through my website, threefoldlotus.com. Um, PayPal me at, um, what is it? Uh, PayPal.me slash Sylvain, I think, uh, just direct. Um, or another thing I thought of, though, today was that send me candles, nice white plain candles, you know, it's things like that. I run out of things like that. Um, or, uh, you know, incense, good, clean incense, um, th things that help with the practice. Those donations are certainly help me a great deal, but I think that, that the cause they represent are good for you as well. Only if you're able to do it though. I'm, I'm not asking you to, to, to spend your last dollar to, you spend it on yourself, spend it on your practice. Okay, but um, so enough on that. Um, but thank, but truly, truly, from depth of my heart, thank you so much. You guys helped 2020 be really successful against many odds, um, and uh, hopefully my videos reflect that, the sound quality, the video quality, and so on. Um, but I want to keep making them for you because it, it makes it makes my life so much better, and I hope it helps yours. With that, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much.